Good morning, this is Luke Ahmed, your CISP instructor for the evening, using a very salacious voice. You know, I was playing Counter-Strike the other day, and uh, somebody was like, Whoa, I like your voice. You have a very sexy voice. And I was like, yeah, I make a living out of my voice. But when I, like, record back and listen to myself, I get so, like, weirded out. I'm like, is that what I sound like? I, I don't know. I just sound, I always feel like I sound weird. Uh, yesterday was a very lucrative day for me. As a, so I, I'm, I'm trying to phase out of my real job. I'm trying to phase out of my professional job and try to go private with myself instead of working for a corporation, which I love, by the way. I love working for corporations. I love going in, doing my work, excelling, learning network security, and, and just getting as much experience as possible. But being a CSM instructor and uh, we're having another professional job, it's it's I'm giving 50-50, right? I need to give 100% or at least 80% to this and 20% of something else. So I'm trying to phase out and become a private security consulting guy. And yesterday was one of my first attempts, and uh, I got to I get to drive into and I couldn't believe it. I, I yesterday was what? what what day is it today? Wednesday? Yesterday was Tuesday. So on Sunday evening, I I sent out an invoice to a company a long time ago to complete. I said, I uh, you want to hire me for you know, six hours of um, consulting for a new cloud data center. Um, this is this is my price, and I gave a ridiculous amount, like a five-figure ridiculous amount price that I never thought would ever get fulfilled. And then Sunday evening, I get this dropped into my inbox, like uh, so and so company, a big company by the way. Trust me, this company can afford five figures, like it was it was nothing. They said they completed your invoice. I'm like, oh oh wow, they actually paid me that. Okay, sweet. So on, uh, I said on Tuesday I would drive down and meet meet with them at the corporation and go over their data center work. And what they wanted to do was migrate their cloud desktops and their on-premise infrastructure, not cloud desktops, what am I saying? Their on-premise desktops to the cloud, to a very famous uh, cloud provider. Not AWS, but one of the other two. And I got in there and uh, it was me and my colleague. We, we went in there and we realized it was a simple job. They're paying... You don't want to know how much they pay me? They pay me $10,000 for five hours of work. And I, I didn't even touch anything. I didn't touch any systems. I didn't play with any configurations. All I did was advise. I just advised them on how to migrate their on-premise systems to the cloud. And the reason they couldn't do it is because they hired all these like Ivy League students right out of college who whose idea of being cloud experts was just creating AWS instances on their console and then RDPing to it and they thought that's all they needed to know about the cloud. They didn't they had no idea what a migration would take. And you know, they they you know, they graduated Ivy League schools, they hired their friends, they had zero real world experience, so they were way they were in over their head. Uh, these are like elite guys. They you know they look down on people like me, basically street guys. Like I got my degree when I was 30, because right after high school I went into the workforce. I went into the IT workforce, so I built up a whole bunch of experience that they'll never catch up to. So my co- my colleague too. So we both walk in, we talk about what what it's gonna take. We we lecture for five to six hours. I think it was like six hours, including lunch and breaks and all that. And we told them exactly what's needed. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna hire us back to do the actual migration because from the looks on their faces, this was way over their head. And it's simple, right? You go from on-premise to the cloud. It's not that simple, but it's supposed to be configured over a weekend, but it takes six months of planning to make everything go perfectly. You gotta transfer the IPs. You gotta spin up the VMs and on, on, on the other side. You gotta create the IPsec VPN tunnels. You gotta make sure all the servers have the data. You gotta make sure all the connections are right, the access, the identity management, the federated identity, the single sign-on, all that has to be done. They had no idea about that kind of stuff. So they paid us this gob of money just to come in and advise them. And I, and I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I can't believe they paid me this much and my colleague this much just to come and talk. And uh, I have a feeling they're gonna call us back to actually do the job for them. I don't know if I'll do that. I just, that's just gonna take up a lot of my time. And um, I don't know, it's just not my thing. Anyway, also don't forget to check out me, Prob, and Prashant's new triumvirate talks on this YouTube channel. Uh, it's just a series of talks of what we we talk, we pick a topic, and then we talk about how we apply the concepts to our to our real life. Okay. Anyway, let's go over this practice question. It is when it comes to the flexibility of using different encryption algorithms for mobile devices, which of the following would work best as an authentication standard for a secure sign-on experience? Is it choice A, SAML? Is it choice B, OAuth? 
Is it choice C, OpenID Connect, otherwise known as OIDC, or is it single sign-on? Tough one, guys. It's a tough one. You have to look at the keywords and search your brain for where this question fits into in which aspect of the CISP exam. First, look at the last line, secure sign-on experience. You're trying to sign on to something. So this falls into domain five, identity and access management. This means that choice D, single sign-on, is most likely not the answer, because like, it doesn't feel right, right? It's, it's asking for a secure sign-on experience with an answer of single sign-on. It doesn't feel right. It, it seems too obvious and it's as if they're providing this choice they're giving you this choice choice so you pick it and get it wrong and here's a secret choices a b and c all work to provide the service of single sign-on next look at these three terms flexibility encryption and mobile devices the correct choice will be one that provides more flexibility than the other three choices choices when it comes to encrypting a secure sign-on experience on a mobile device if you're studying well and are one to do two one to two days, I can't even talk this morning because I'm so blown away by what they paid me yesterday. I, I can't believe it. I mean, I still gotta pay taxes on it and all that kind of stuff, but I mean that was mind blowing. And, and the thing is, I, I love hearing about cybersecurity professionals making a lot of money. I love it because you know, 20 years ago we weren't making this much money. There were, there, you know, my parents wanted me to be a doctor. Like I'm, you know, I, I'm born here, but my parents are Bengali. And uh, they wanted me to be a doctor or a lawyer when I grew up. And then when I first, and when they started getting the checks from me every month as a security guy, they understood that I didn't have to work that hard. I mean, I still do, but I didn't have to work that hard to make that much money now. It's, it's insane. Where was I? Um, so is, is the answer SAML? No, SAML is flexible, yes, but boy, is it complex to set up in a federated cloud, much less a, a mobile device. SAML does not commonly support single sign-on for mobile devices or API data transfers as a standard. The question is asking specifically for a secure mobile device sign-on experience. Sure, maybe you can configure a mobile device to use SAML, sure, but these maybes aren't, aren't going to cut it for the CISP exam. You want to give the question what it is looking for. And the question is looking specifically for the choice that aligns with the technology that is known for providing mobile device authentication that is both secure and flexible. SAML doesn't meet that criteria. Is it choice B, OAuth? OAuth stands for Open Authorization. An easy way to eliminate this answer right away, the question is asking about authentication. OAuth is focused on authorization and delegation. Easy. This only leaves choice C, which is indeed the correct answer for future CISSPs. OpenID Connect uses JSON web tokens, while SAML uses the XML language to exchange information, authentication information. JSON is specifically known for its portability and working nicely with mobile apps. But the main reason is OpenID Connect uses multiple types of public key encryption algorithms like RSA or ECDSA, which stands for Elliptical Curve Data Standard Algorithm? Yeah, that must be it. I don't th I forget the full part of that acronym. And the thing about ECDSA is that it uses smaller encryption keys, but still provides strong encryption like that of RSA. But that small footprint makes its speed and key size perfect for mobile devices. Kind of like how you're reading that ECC elliptical curve cryptography is best for mobile devices in your CSV study guides, right? You are reading that, right? If you haven't, you will, domain three. Elliptical curve cryptography is best used for mobile device encryption. That's like a CSV thing you have to know. Just like how DES uses 56 bits out of its 40, out of its 64 bit key length. Everyone seems to think that's something you should memorize for the exam. Here's a secret, you don't, but it's nice to know regardless. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.